Um, it's my pleasure to, an to introduce Dr. Nancy Say to give the next talk. Nancy received her undergraduate degree from Virginia Commonwealth, so just down the road, and she finished her PhD in neuroscience just recently at uh, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, which I know some other people in this room had spent time at. Nope, he's gone. Um, her, her research for her PhD, she combined wet bench lab experiments with computational approach to study the genetics and the neurobiology of drug abuse behaviors. After graduation, or actually even before she finished her thesis defense, she was awarded a fellowship that ECIB, at the Education and Community Involvement Branch of NHGRI, holds jointly with the American Society of Human Genetics for a fellow who's interested in transitioning to genomics education. Um, and this is a program that's been going on for several years. Nancy was ahead of the curve. In fact, Ghana was ahead of the curve because they did DNA Day a couple weeks ago, uh, courtesy of Nancy's visit to Ghana. Um, Nancy was actually born in Ghana, but has been in the US since age 14, I believe. Um, and she's gonna present a slide presentation and talk about her experience visiting schools in Ghana. So thank you everyone for staying for the afternoon session. Um, it is with great pleasure that I get to discuss uh, my trip to Ghana, taking DNA Day there. So this trip would not have been possible um, as successful without the help of two incredible individuals, so namely Tessa Montague and Fred Rubino, who volunteered their time to help me run the program. So before I get started, I just want to orient everybody to where Ghana is. Um, so Ghana is a country within the western part of Africa and we are known for our rich culture, including cocoa, which is used to make delicious chocolate that I'm sure many of you enjoy, and as well as our rich culture of dance and, um, dance and food. So I traveled to Ghana last month, and while I was there, I had the opportunity to visit three schools in two regions of Ghana. So the first one was the Accra region, um, and then the second one being the Ashanti region. So in Accra, um, which is the capital of Ghana, I got to visit the American International School, and in the Ashanti region, I visited Ya Santua High School and then Opokuware High School. So a majority of my talk will be focused on the high schools, um, but before that, I want to share a bit about my visit to the American International School. So I got uh, um, connected to American International School, or AIS for short, um, through a former, post, um, a former postdoc at the NIH, um, Dr. Shamika Thomas Poetry, who connected me to the headmistress of AIS. So the headmistress is pictured here. Um, the headmistress really wants to, she wanted to um, introduce her younger students to biomedical sciences very early on. And so when she found out about my trip, she really pushed for me to come visit the classrooms. So this here is a picture of me um, interacting with the students. Um, so prior to my, um, my program with them, I wanted to get to, the um, get to know the students and then also have them get to know me. So we started off with some brief introductions where I asked them to share their names and then also share their hobbies. So I found out that they're an interesting bunch of students. Um, so they are interested in lots of hobbies, including music, dancing, playing video games. And then one student shared that their hobby is just hanging out with their parents, which I thought was very sweet. Um, so after the introductions, um, I also gave an introduction of myself. And I got to talk to them about my life as a scientist. So following the um, career talk, um, I engaged the students in a neuroscience activity. So what we're doing here is that um, the brain um, caps that you see up there was the neuroscience activity, so it was a brain coloring activity. And the objective for this activity is that the facilitator, which was me, um, I asked the students to just color um, the different lobes of the um, brain. And then as they were doing that coloring, I got to engage them in conversations about the different functions of the brain. So one thing I wasn't expecting was that um, I wasn't expecting the teachers to also get involved in the program, um, but this particular teacher here got really into the activity herself, and she really wanted a picture of her shown, so that is a picture of her and the brain that she colored. So following the activity, um, I asked the students, um, I told them to ask me any questions that they would like um, answered. So once um, I got a lot of intri intriguing questions. Um, one student told me, though, that she really wants to be an astronaut, um, but she is worried that her spaceship will just blow up in space. 
And I told her that although I'm not a trained astronaut, I am quite confident that there are protocols in place to make sure that that does, that does not happen. So she was satisfied with that answer. So this kind of like wraps up my um, visit to the American International School. So following that, uh, my colleagues, um, Tessa and Fred, got to join me for these two other schools, so Opokuwari um, and Yasantua um, schools. So a little bit of background on who these individuals are. Um, so Yasantua was an Ashanti warrior that led the Ashanti region into battle against the British Empire. Um, and then Opokuwari, who was pictured over there, um, so he was a chief for the Ashanti region during the 1700s. So these schools are named after these prominent individuals in Ghanaian um, history. So our visit to um, Opokwari and Yasanto was slightly different than my solo visit to AIS in that this was a whole day's affair. Um, so we started off by doing a lab donation um, to the school. So I had collected surplus lab materials at UNC that I had shipped to Ghana to be able to donate to the, to the science classrooms. And then following that, my um, colleagues and I each gave a career talk um, where we got to introduce ourselves and share our journey to science. Um, so during like my um, um, career talk, I got to tell them like what DNA Day is and why this year's celebration is particularly important and significant. And at Yasantua um, School, I got to share this slightly embarrassing picture of myself. So picture there is me and my older sister and then over here is also like my older sister, who actually attended Ya Santua. So this picture um, with the three of us were taken during like one of our Sunday visits to her at Ya Santua. So I got to share this anecdote with the students. And following that, we had um, a wide variety of labs that we engaged the students in. So I will tell you a little bit about the labs that we had. Um, so we had three main activities, um, and then we had like one optional activity where we use that optional activity to fill in time um, when there are like some downtimes. So the first activity that we had was the pipette practice. Um, so here are pictures of the students during the pipette practice. Um, so before we started the activities though, we had, my colleagues and I had brought lab coats and goggles um, for the students to dress up in them. And the reason why we wanted to do this is because there's something about putting on the white coat that really makes you feel like a scientist. And that was the image that we wanted to project to the students that yes, you are a true scientist. Um, so on the bottom here is pictures of the Yas and Tua girls um, just having a lot of fun with the micro pipette. Um, and the picture that is shown on my right here um, is taken, um, it was taken at Upokuwari. And it's one of my favorite pictures from the program um, is because this guy, his name is Eugene. Um, so Eugene's got so much into pipetting and wanted to pi um, perfect his pipetting skills that he actually skipped a portion of his lunchtime just to pipe it some more. And I thought that was very beautiful. So after um, pipetting, um, we moved on to our second activity, which was a DNA extraction. Um, so traditionally, I know this um, activity has been done using strawberries, but strawberries are not native to Ghana. Um, so it was going to be difficult for us to get strawberries just for this particular activity. So we substituted strawberries um, for their students' own saliva. So they got to see um, DNA extracted using like their own saliva. And now I will share um, some pictures from that activity. Um, so these are montage of pictures from the Yas and Tua girls um, with the students um, showing the DNA that they had extracted. Uh, they had a lot of fun. And if you see in this blown up picture here, you can just see like the awe and amazement in the students' eyes as they got to see their own DNA extracted. And um, we took the same set of activities to the boys' school, so Opokuwari school, um, where once again, you can just see like the awe and amazement in their eyes as they got to see their own DNA easily extracted using um, materials that is easily present in their own environment. And that was one of the things that they really appreciated about this um, specific activity is that they could use materials that they can easily find in their own environment. So following um, the DNA extraction, um, we had um, one last major lab that was a forensics lab. Um, so this particular um, lab was donated to us by a company called Mini PCR. So before starting with the forensics lab though, um, the, the students um, were required to know and become familiar with gel electrophoresis analysis, which is just a method that scientists use to separate molecules of different sizes. So to make sure that the students understand um, this method, we brought it home um, 
by grouping them into three different groups. So we had one group of students where it was just made up of one student, and then we had another group made up of 10 students, and then we had another one made up of 19 students. And then we asked the students to move through this maze um, that is made with chairs. Um, so the picture, the black and white picture is them moving through that maze. And what they grasped from this um, little activity is that the person that was alone, so this student was representative of a small molecule, they were a lot faster at moving through the maze than the groups that were made up of 10 and then the 19 students. So once we were satisfied that they knew um, the basis of gel electrophoresis, we moved on to the forensics lab. So the forensics lab um, is a hypothetical case where um, a hypothetical prisoner whose initials is JM is currently serving time um, for a crime that he has maintained that he did not commit. But because he has maintained that he did not commit the crime, the court has authorized a DNA analysis. So the students got to um, act as forensic scientists to prove whether JM had committed the crime or whether somebody else had done it. So here are pictures from the forensics lab. Um, so on the top here, you're seeing that the student is loading um, the DNA material. So they actually got to load actual DNA material. Um, so DNA um, from JM, the person that is currently in prison, they got to load DNA from the victim, as well as evidence, and then DNA um, samples from two other suspects. And then they also got to see the gel run um, using the material that was donated to us by mini PCR. And spoiler alert, they found that JM did not commit the crime, so it was somebody else. So lastly, um, just kind of like to tie everything together, we wanted the students to um, showcase what they've learned um, through the day. So shout out to ASHG for allowing us to use their um, essay prompt for the 2023 essay contest. So the students have until end of this month to submit um, their responses to this essay prompt for a chance to win any of the prizes that is listed here. So I've already received um, about 15 submissions, which is really great because I, I had only anticipated maybe like five or seven students submitting essays. So to start to tie everything together, um, my colleagues and I had a lot of fun running this program, um, but at the end of the day, it wasn't about us. It was about the students um, and what they got from the day. So we wanted to learn from them um, how we can improve um, future programs if we run future programs. And they had glowing reviews for us. Um, so one thing that they told us was that it was such an awesome experience um, to see their own DNA being extracted from their saliva. One, also, one student also said that it had encouraged them to study um, hard and also to choose the right career path. And then one comment that we constantly kept getting from almost all of the students that we visited was that they would like to see the program expanded to other um, high schools in Ghana so that their friends can have the opportunity to get what they had been able to like, get from the day with us. So this has inspired um, my colleagues and I to start planning for the 2024 program. And for the 2024 program, we wanted to look something different. We wanted to be bigger and better. So instead of just going to three schools, um, we're going to be expanding to um, five plus schools. So we're aiming for maybe seven or eight schools, um, high schools in Ghana, with a combination of boys schools and then also girls schools. And we also want to um, continue with the lab equipment donation um, because that is something that was very impactful for the teachers. Um, they kept thanking us throughout the whole day, um, saying that one of the equipments that we had donated to them, their school has not had that equipment for the past years. So whenever the students have to do an exam using that equipment, they have to borrow it from some, some other school. So having their own was just very impactful for them. And then another thing that the teachers called for was a training session just for the, um, the teachers themselves because they also want to participate in DNA Day. Um, so we're going to incorporate a training session so that the teachers themselves can continue to bring science alive for the students when my colleagues and I are not there. And then lastly, we will also like to highlight training opportunities and resources um, for both the teachers and also the students. And this is because when my colleagues and I were given our career talk, we highlighted um, opportunities that we received because we were in the US, and we do not want to communicate to them that the only way that you can become a successful scientist is by being abroad. We want them to see some of the beautiful science um, that is happening on the African continent. So this is where the lab visit comes in. So when I was in Ghana, um, I had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Oforiakwa, who um, is part of the H3 Africa Initiative, um, and also the director for the West African 
medicine center that is currently being built on the East Lake on campus in Ghana. So from our conversations, um, he is committed to hosting the students for a lab tour during next year's program with the chance that um, this can matriculate into a summer research opportunity for the high school students in Ghana. And with that, um, I would just like to thank you all for listening to my talk um, and also like thank my colleagues, Tessa and Fred, and as well as my colleagues um, at ECIB, ASHG, and then also some funding through HHMI. And I will take any questions. Nancy, that was awesome. Thank you. Um, my question is uh, from me, not online. I know I've been doing it online, so this is for me. But you've had an amazing experience going to Ghana, taking mm -hmm. DNA Day to Ghana. And I'm curious what approaches or recommendations would you make to NHGRI, to the Education and Community Involvement Branch, mm -hmm. as we are thinking about continuing to engage educators and students in international settings for DNA Day? One thing I would like to say is that the students are hungry for these kinds of opportunities. Um, they're just so brilliant. And I know that they're welcome to all kinds of opportunities that might become available to them through NHGRI. Um, but another thing that I would like to add is that there are going to be challenges that might not be necessarily present in the US. So for example, the forensics activity to make the gel, the agarose gel, um, mini PCR gave me um, these tablets that all you had to do was put the tablet in water and then microwave it for 30 seconds to have the gel be ready. But there was no microwave at any of the schools, so we had to use a water bath. So something that takes 30 seconds now became an hour process. And then also there was a challenge where um, at one of the schools, the lights ended up just going off for like an hour or so. Um, so my, my colleagues and I had to be creative in using that as a lunch time for the students. So these are challenges that um, might be present in international classrooms, Ghana, um, for example, that might not necessarily be faced in the US. So planning for these challenges in advance um, is important. And the other thing I would like to mention is um, the channels that you go through for collaboration is very important. So while I'm extremely grateful for Tessa and Fred for coming along to help me, um, a couple of the students mentioned that they wanted to also see more African scientists. So it would be important to um, go through like African scientists um, as a chance of like collaboration for the students to see that, okay, this can also be you and that it doesn't have to be somebody else that is from a whole new um, continent. Yeah. So I had a question. Did you, um, I saw laboratory exercises that you did. Did you try any computational exercises? So we have not tried computational exercise with the students um, quite yet because they don't have an access to their own personalized laptops but or do computers. Do they have any at the schools, even just like two or three sta workstations or laptops you could do something from at the schools or not? So I, um, so I talked to somebody else and they're actually interested in giving, um, like having some of their students like give career talks and also like research talks to the students. So I'm currently working with the Yas and Tua School to see if they can get like a computer station together so that the students can have this opportunity. So maybe that's something that we can look to doing um, in the future as well. Hello, my name is Isharlak Sina. My ancestry is from Ghana, so I want to let you know that a lot of the people here could be a scientist. Everybody could be a scientist. So what advice would you give kids and other people who want to be a scientist? Thank you for that sweet question. <laughs> so my advice is to just keep doing what you're doing. Um, if you're interested in science, that is something that begins very early on. Um, so if you have established that interest, um, just keep doing what you're doing and hopefully you have a community of other people that even if they're not scientists are going to be supportive of you. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it because you're lying. <laughs>
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nancy. Um,